So let's go ahead and get started. Last class, or last video lecture, we started talking about, uh, or we finished talking about biological hierarchy. We talked about individual organisms and the classifications of those organisms. We had producers, which undergo photosynthesis. We have consumers that undergo cellular respiration. And then we have decomposers. Don't forget, both decomposers and producers also undergo cellular respiration. So now we're going to talk about the relationships between those organisms, between producers and consumers, and even decomposers. And one way we can look at those relationships is looking at a food chain or a trophic pyramid. You've probably heard of food chains before. Really, all you're trying to figure out is who is eating who. Uh, who is at the top of the food chain? Who is at the bottom of the food chain? Now, trophic pyramid may be a different terminology for you. I'm going to use both of those interchangeably. What we see here is a trophic pyramid. You can see that pyramid shape. We'll talk more about that pyramid shape in a little bit. Trophic is referring to each one of these levels. They're called trophic levels. Essentially the same thing as feeding levels. So each level, here we have producers and various types of consumers. That is an individual trophic level. So, if I were to ask you how many trophic levels are here, you would say five. We have five different parts of this trophic pyramid. We could also draw this out in food chain form, and each individual organism would be considered an individual trophic level. <coughs> so let's break down this trophic level, or this uh, food chain. At the base of every single food chain, whether it's a food chain on land, whether it's a food chain in the water, or anywhere on earth, every single food chain and every single trophic pyramid starts with producers. Main reason why is they get their energy from the sun. So they don't need to eat anything else. They are making that first line of energy. We as consumers cannot get our energy from the sun. Only producers can. So producers are at the base of every single food chain. Now there's lots of different producers. You might have grasses or bushes like you see in this image. Thinking about the aquatic food chain, you might see algae or phytoplankton. Don't forget that word, phytoplankton. Bacteria, some of them are producers. But no matter what, producers will always be at the bottom of a trophic pyramid or a food chain. And just recall, what you need for photosynthesis. You need solar energy. You need carbon dioxide and water. So the base of every food chain. Now the next level up, so we've gotten rid of all of our cons producers. Now what's left is our consumers. But not all consumers are equal. If you think about here we have bees or caterpillars, they're a different kind of consumer than saying a shark. A shark usually at the top of the food chain, you know, caterpillars pretty much right at the bottom. We actually have a way of denoting that. We call them primary consumers. Primary meaning first. They are the first consumer in a food chain or the first consumer in a trophic pyramid. These guys are herbivores. They are eating producers. They are eating just herbs or plants. So these guys, primary consumers. One way to shorthand that, I'm going to draw here, is I have this one referring to primary or first, and then this little degree symbol that denotes primary. So we have our primary consumers. And again, these are going to be our herbivores. Now next tier up, secondary. Secondary consumers eat primary consumers. So we're going a little bit higher. In this example, we have rats, we have birds, we have toads. These guys are eating those caterpillars, those uh, butterflies, those insects. So I'm going to mark these with a two and then that degree symbol. And that denotes secondary. And I'll show you why this little shorthand form is kind of important. Now I have up here, they can be carnivores and some of them are even omnivores. The reason is, is think about humans. We eat plants, so that would make us a primary consumer, but we also eat meat, uh, so that would make us a secondary consumer. 
So what is it? Well, think about us. So I'm going to draw here as humans, and we eat these guys. That would make us secondary. But we also eat these guys. We eat those producers. That makes us primary. So you can actually fit into multiple roles. And we'll touch on that again in a little bit. But I just want to make that note that a secondary consumer, they are not limited to only eating primary consumers. But, at least in this food chain, we see this toad is going to eat this ant, which eats this grass. That makes it a secondary consumer. And it just goes up from there. If an organism like these snakes are eating a secondary consumer, that makes them a tertiary consumer. Uh, here we have an osprey, so a bird of prey. That's eating snakes. So that's going to make it a quaternary consumer. You're not going to need to spell quaternary. Uh, the next one up is quintenary. Really, that's what these numbers are really nice because you can just use those numbers. I know what you're trying to say. So again, all it we're saying is you have your producers always at the bottom. Whatever eats them, primary consumers. Whatever eats a primary consumer, eats a secondary consumer, so on and so forth. And depending on what that organism eat, is eating, it might fit into mo multiple trophic levels. We'll talk about that uh, in another video. So thinking about the organisms, we actually didn't mention someone. Uh, we talked about our producers in photosynthesis. Uh, we talked about our consumers, but we kind of left someone out. We left out these guys, our decomposers. We talked about them earlier. We know they're really important, but we didn't see them in a food chain or a trophic period. You're never, ever going to see a picture of a vulture like in there at all. The reason is, is because they only eat dead things. But a food chain is representing live interactions. So although the decomposers are kind of like not pictured at all and it kind of seems sad for them, they're actually incredibly important. First of all, they remove the remains of organisms. Think about roadkill. Yes, we do have trucks that go out and pick out roadkill, but imagine areas that don't have those trucks, areas in the country. That roadkill goes away because of vultures and bacteria and mushrooms and all sorts of decomposers. So without our decomposers, we just would lack, or we would have a surplus of just dead bodies and dead things all around. What's also really awesome about decomposers is, remember when we talked about earlier, they do undergo cellular respiration. They are still eating. You see these vultures here, they're eating a carcass. Well, there's nutrients in that carcass. So the energy in that dead organism goes to that vulture. And I'm actually going to draw that this way. So here's energy going to the vulture. I'm going to mark it with an E. But what's really nice about these guys is they're also going to recycle those nutrients back into the ecosystem. So they're going to poop. Or thinking about bacteria, they also release wastes. They're going to poop, and I'm going to draw this just to the grass, out nutrients, which is so incredibly important. And sure, we do that too, but since they're decomposers, they're recycling the nutrients that are in dead things. We're recycling nutrients in, so to speak, in live things. Uh, so very, very important role. But the reason we don't see them in a food chain or in a trophic pyramid is just because they are eating dead things. They're eating things that are rotting. They are not predating or they are not capturing prey. They're opportunists. They see a dead carcass, they eat it. They do not kill at all. And that's a very important distinction. This slide is an overview of the activity that I gave you in class. On the back of the worksheet I handed out, the front has that checklist for photosynthesis and cellular respiration is the complete uh, form of this activity. So you really don't need to pay attention to what is on this PowerPoint slide. If you have lost that worksheet or misplaced it or you never got one, you can also find a copy of it online in the lectures folder where you found this PowerPoint in the video link. So go ahead and pause this video to work on this activity. 
when you've gone through, go ahead and restart to uh, go over the answers. And I do encourage you to actually pause and to actually work through this because this is a great example of what you'll see on the test. So go ahead and work on this now. So your first exercise, or the first part that you needed to do, was looking at these four organisms, identify where they go in this food chain. So the very first one, it's for me easier to work bottom to top, starting with flowers. So flowers are a producer, and we know producers are always, always, always at the bottom of a food chain. Now, I know butterflies, just like bees, go flower to flower and get nectar. They don't eat insects or anything like that. So butterfly is going to go next. Now, remember, that makes it a primary consumer. So let me actually label these as well. I'm going to put a P next to this one, P just to stand for producer. Next to this butterfly, I'm going to put a one degree, meaning primary, and I know you mean primary consumer. Now the next one up, we have two left. We have frog and spider. And maybe you're like, well, I don't really know, like, do frogs eat butterflies? Do spiders eat butterflies? Well, think about frog and spider. I mean, spiders are pretty small and frogs are much larger uh, so at least in that sense frogs must be eating the spiders and even if you didn't know spiders eat butterflies that's okay but think about frog and spider so frog must be at the top because it's the largest that's a really good rule of thumb whatever's larger is probably at the top and then below that we have spider So if the spider is eating a butterfly, that must make it a secondary consumer because it's an organism that's eating this primary consumer. For the frog, frog must be tertiary because it's eating a secondary consumer. So you're just going one up. So that answers kind of the first question or the first part of the exercise. The first question asks, you know, how many herbivores are there or what are the herbivores? Well, in this case, we only have one herbivore, and that's our butterfly. Our butterfly is eating plants, and we know herbivores eat plants. Uh, so we have one herbivore, and that herbivore is the butterfly. How many carnivores do we have? Now, do not mix up carnivores and consumers. Consumers are just something that eats something else. Carnivore specifically is eating other consumers versus eating producers like herbivores. So in this case, we have two carnivores. We have spiders who are eating butterflies. Butterflies are a consumer. We also have frogs. Frogs are eating spiders. So in this case, we have two carnivores. And then in this case, we just have one photosynthesizer, our flowers. Now it asks how many types of consumers we have. Well, in this case, we have three different types of consumers. We have primary consumer, a secondary consumer, and a tertiary consumer. Now, it doesn't ask this directly, but if it asked how many producers are there? Producers are photosynthesizers, so that's similar to question three, but just make sure you know both of those terms. Photosynthesizers, plants, producers, all interchangeable. 